Good morning and welcome to worship. Good morning, everyone. <clears throat> welcome to the worshipers who worship here in the building, those who are worshiping throughout our various broadcasts that we do, and so we're still doing all our broadcasts as we have been through the pandemic. Thank you to our camera technicians, Brian and Pat, pianist Jean, our singers, Andy, and the screeners who all make our worship service happen. Um, we do begin our indoor, in-person worship today. CDC guidelines are guiding what this looks like, and the list might be confusing, so the singers will explain what is expected. The first true love church from the CDC will all keep each other healthy. The second rule of church from the CDC, no children summon, and we'll all keep each other healthy. The third rule of church from the CDC, please wear a mask, no children summon, and we'll all keep each other healthy. The fourth rule of church from the CDC Please wash your hands and wear a mask No children servants And we'll all keep each other healthy The fifth rule of church from the CDC Five feet apart Six Please wash your hands and wear a mask No children servants and we'll all keep each other healthy. The sixth rule of church from the CDC. No contact greeting. Five feet apart. No. Six. Please wash your hands. And wear a mask. No children serve And we'll all keep each other healthy. The seventh rule of church from the CDC. Don't come with a fever. No contact greeting. Five feet apart. No. Six. Please wash your hands. And wear a mask. No children summon. Then we'll all keep each other healthy. The eighth rule of church from the CDC. Listen to the ushers. Don't come with a fever. No contact greeting. Five feet apart. Six, John. Please wash your hands. And wear a mask. No children soon. And we'll all keep each other healthy. The ninth rule of church from the CDC. No coffee hour. Listen to the don't come with a fever. No contact greeting. Five feet apart. Six, John. Please wash your hands. And wear a mask. No children serve. And we'll all keep each other healthy. The tenth rule of church from the CDC. No bathrooms open. No coffee hour. Listen to the don't come with a fever. No contact greeting. Five feet apart. John, come on. Six. Please wash Six. your hands. And wear a mask. No children serving. And we'll all keep each other healthy. The eleventh rule of church from the CDC. Sit in your assigned seat. No bathrooms open. No coffee hour. Listen to the don't come with a fever. No contact greeting. Five feet apart. Last time, John. Six. Please Six. wash your hands. And wear a mask. No children soon. And we'll all keep each other healthy. The twelfth rule of church from the CDC. We'll do all the singing in your sign seat. No bathroom. 
it's open. No coffee hour. Listen to the ashes. Don't come with a fever. No contact greeting. Five feet apart. No sex. Really? Please wash your hands. And wear a mask. No children's sermon. And we'll all keep each other healthy. announcements that aren't going to be sung. <laughs> uh, the monthly Good Shepherd newsletter arrived in your homes last week. Please take some time to read it. There's a note in the newsletter about our education program for youth in pre-K through sixth grade and we invite you to register for the home education program by calling or emailing Andy at the church office so we can get those kits, the right number of kits put together. This week, our confirmation program begins on Wednesday. Those in grades 7 and 8 are invited to gather in the backyard of the parsonage, this yard to the north of the church, for a 30-minute orientation. The program is very different this year from past, so we hope to gather all families of 7th and 8th graders um, 6.30 Wednesday, the 23rd. One pastor is missing today. Meg is in the hospital. She's recuperating from a Friday hip replacement surgery. The surgery went very well. She was able to do it with a spinal, so she didn't have those after effects from having general anesthesia. And she thanks you for the ongoing prayers. Worship continues with the hymn. It's in our red hymnal 670, Build Us Up, Lord. Build us up, Lord, build us up. Set in us a strong foundation. Lead us to do your holy will. For men shape your new creation. Build us up, Lord, build us up. As we God each other help us to share your love with the world every sister every brother growing in Christ we plant seeds for the kingdom we follow in faith what's begun Lord said in our hearts the power of to spread the news of your soul. Build us up, Lord, build us up. Let our lives reflect your glory. Cast away all our doubts and fears. Help us tell the world your story. Lord, build us up. Help us bear good fruit for you. Lord, give us vision and keep us sure. Grant us faith that's steadfast and true. Growing in Christ, we plant seeds for the kingdom. We follow in faith what's begun. Lord, set in our hearts the power of your word to spread the news of your soul. Let us pray. Holy God, as you promised Abraham and Sarah that their descendants would be as numerous as the stars in the sky. We give you thanks that you have also promised that we would live as your beloved children, faithful and loved. 
Show us how to live as your people, how to share respect with all your children with whom we share the same canopy of sky night after night. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Last week our Bible story ended with Adam and Eve leaving their home in the Garden of Eden. They left because of their disobedience. Today we read about another man who left his home. This time we read about Abram, who's later called Abraham. He left his home out of obedience to God. In Genesis 12, God commanded Abraham, saying, Leave the land for the land I will show you. I will make of you a great nation. I will bless you. Your name will be respected and you will be a blessing. So today we are reading from Genesis chapter 15. Follow along with me if you have your Bibles out. We're going to read about what happened when Abram obeyed God and followed God out of the land of Ur Ur, and went to Canaan. Genesis 15. After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. God said, don't be afraid, Abram. I'm your shield. Your reward shall be very great. Abram said, O oh Lord God, what will you give me? For I continue to be childless, and the heir of my house is Elizer of Damascus. And Abram said, You have given me no offspring, and so a slave born in my house is to be my heir. But the word of God came to him, saying, This man shall not be your heir. No one but your very own issue shall be your heir. God brought Abram outside and said, Look towards the heaven. Count all the stars, if you are able to even count them. And then God said to Abram, so shall your descendants be. And Abram believed the Lord, and the Lord reckoned to him as righteousness. to the seed of your word. Lord, let my heart be good soil, where love can grow and peace is understood. When my heart is hard, break the storm away. When my heart is cold, warm it with the day. When my heart is Lead me on your way, Lord, let my heart, Lord, let my heart, Lord, let my heart be good soul. Grace to you and peace from God the Father and from our Lord and our Savior who is Jesus, the Christ. The little girl holds her mom tightly after waking up from a bad dream and cries to her, I'm so scared. The patient waits in the doctor's office for the diagnosis and thinks, this is the most afraid I've ever been. And the man realizes that his driving skills have diminished so much and thinks to himself, now I'm really getting frightened. Those are some fears that might go through the heads of some people. What are you afraid of? A Gallup poll listed the fears of Americans and the list looked like this. Number one, snakes. Number two, public speaking. Number three, this is mine, heights. Number four, claustrophobia or being in a tight space. And number five, mice. Then I looked further and I found a second survey that looked a little different. It asked the question deep down, what are you really afraid of? 
This time the top three answers were failure, death, and rejection. Now each of us has our own particular list of fears. Even the bravest person probably struggles with a fear or two in their lives. While we believe that God is in control and we're certain that God is with us always and cares for us and we are God's people, we still struggle when things around us get out of control. In our Bible story for today, Abram is facing his fears too. God came to Abram in a vision and gave him a great promise. God said to him, don't be afraid, Abram. I will shield you from all danger and I will give you a great reward. Now the great reward that God is talking about is the land of Canaan. Abraham had, Abram had already left the land of Ur where he had been settled for a long time and followed the commands of God to go then to Canaan. But he's there and he's getting old and he's thinking, what good is a whole bunch of great land when I have no one to inherit it? He's 75 years old by this time. He doesn't have much use for land anymore. He just sits back and watches his servants take care of it. And he realizes that they're going to be the ones that inherit it from him. So what good is it working hard? when they're the only ones that will inherit it. He wanted a child, an heir. He said to God then, you talk about a reward that I'm gonna get and the reward that I really want as a child and long ago you promised me that I would have some descendants and you led me to this land and what good is a promise when my body tells me I'm too old. Not to mention, look at her, Sarai. She's an old woman. How can she go through pregnancy and labor? And Abram continued ranting to God, saying, I believe that you will shield me from all danger, but the one thing I've wanted is a child, and it is much too late for that. That's a paraphrase, of course. This is how God responded. God said, as long as you keep looking at your situation and focusing on that like your old age and Sarah's inability to get pregnant as long as you keep wondering about who's gonna inherit all that you have then things will look gloomy things will look hopeless and he said come on outside Abram look at the stars count them if you can and he looks up and he sees the night sky just filled with numerous stars in the night sky and God let Abram know that that is how many descendants he would have and then he told Abram to stop focusing on what is possible from a human point of view and start trusting in God remembering that God has no limits now, Abram, you need to know, was a great man of faith. How many people would just uproot their entire, um, their entire household and move a great distance away? He'd done that following the command of God. He was a great man of faith. But we also see he was a man filled with doubts. All God asked was, trust me. Trust me. Even though you and your wife are getting old, and the beautiful words that this reading ends with, and boy, if you have your Bibles out, I would think about underlining these words, the most striking words that we have in our Bible. And Abram believed. Abram believed. He had every reason to doubt God every reason to be afraid but in the end Abram believed he believed and he trusted in God 
He trusted God to keep his promise, and that's not an easy thing to do. Trusting entirely in God can be difficult. We expect God to work, okay? According to what is reasonable, what is logical, but looking at an elderly wife, it was illogical to think that they could conceive a child together. But God's ways don't always make sense to our human minds. Sometimes life can feel like a jigsaw puzzle. And if you're like me, you've done some jigsaw puzzles. I haven't done one for a while now. But at the beginning, I got out the jigsaw puzzles at the beginning of the pandemic. Remember what it's like at the beginning of a puzzle when you dump all the pieces on the table? And if you didn't have the cover of the box, you would have no idea what you're making, okay? And maybe you start sorting by common color, or in our house, we start by sorting out the edge pieces. It doesn't make any sense until the pieces start fitting together. And my point is that God promises to stick with us as the big picture is being put together and begs us to pay, be patient and wait and trust. God promises that even when we take our last breath, the last pieces to our puzzle will still be put into place and we will finally see that picture from heaven. We'll see then the beautiful picture that God made all throughout our lives with all those seemingly pointless and puzzling events that we went through. In our Bible story today, Abram and Sarah are struggling as the pieces are put together in their lives. They traveled to Canaan. They took all their belongings, their livestock, their servants, their tents. They went 550 miles away. That's how far they relocated on foot. All because God promised them many things. They knew they had a great God. But God didn't seem so great when Abram was standing there with what felt like one foot in the grave and was promised that he would have many, many descendants, and he didn't have any at that point. But Abram's our teacher today, who teaches us that faith is simply taking God at his word. Faith believes the promise that God gives to us that we are his beloved children, and that God will watch through us as we travel through the ups and downs of life. It's a great promise. A story out of World War II. A father and his son fled their apartment building when it got bombed in London and was burning. They ran out of their building into the dark street to the night sky and turned around and saw the smoke billowing out of their building and the German warplanes were still flying overhead closely and so the father knew they needed to take shelter immediately. He saw in the road there a deep crater. So the father jumped into the crater and then held out his arms for his son to follow him. The smoke was so thick and it was dark and the son looked down into the crater and couldn't see his dad. The father yelled though, jump, jump son, and I'll catch you. But the boy was terrified, jump. He said one more time and the little boy cried out, but I can't see you. The father looked up though and could clearly see his son in the glow of the burning building behind him and shouted again to his son, but I can see you. So jump. The boy finally had to place all his trust in his father and jump into the darkness. Faith trusts God to help. Not because we can see God, but because we are seen by God. God sees what's going on with us. God promises to guide us. Faith trusts not faith trusts God not because we have all the answers 
or we know how things are going to turn out in life, but because God has all the answers. When we're overwhelmed with struggles and pain and hardship and fears overwhelm us, hold on to the promise that God has vowed to be with us always. God will never leave us, never abandon us. If you're going through a hard time right now and wonder what will happen in the end, you can do nothing better than follow the steps of Abram and go out and look at the night sky some night when it's not cloudy and see the stars just the way that God asked Abram to do. And remember, there is a star for each one of Abram's descendants. And one represents each of us. God's promise still shines. Now through us, called to be lights to the world. Trust in me, says God, fear not, for I am your shield. Amen. using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. 
he descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. It's the time in our worship when we typically would be passing the offering baskets to collect your donations to support our church, Good Shepherd Lutheran. The ministry of Good Shepherd continues, even though things have changed dramatically since the outbreak of the coronavirus. We continue to worship, and we share that worship both near and far. Other churches have used our online services for their services as well. Though so much has changed, we continue to minister to those in need. We continue to care for our building. Your offering dollars support our ministry, even though so much has changed in our lives. You're able to make donations by visiting the Good Shepherd website, clicking the online giving. You can also put your offering in the mail, send it to the church here in Wells. And for those that are worshiping with us here in the building, and we certainly appreciate your being here, you're welcome to leave your offering in the basket by the door as you depart today. Thank you for your faithful support of the ministry of Good Shepherd Lutheran Church in Wells, Minnesota. Giving thanks for all that God has done for us. Let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Just a closer walk with thee. Breath with Jesus is my plea. God, we give you thanks that you promised to stick with us. Help us to remember that even when we can't see you, you can see us, holy God. May we hold tight to strength that comes from your vow to guard us, protect us, and catch us when we fall. May we put aside our fears and trust always in you. Lord, in your mercy, your protector God, we pray for those who are back at school, the students from preschool age to college age. We pray for the teachers and the staff. Bless the teachers, bless the learners, bless the staff, keep them safe in your care. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Mighty God, we pray for all those affected by hurricanes and flooding and wildfires and the virus. As danger surrounds us, we give you thanks for the helpers. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Healing God, we pray for those who are in need this day. We pray for those who grieve. Today we lift up in prayer Marion Sonic and Millie Saylor, who both had a brother and a sister-in-law die this past week. We pray for those who struggle to put food on the table, those who are lonely, those who are sad. We pray for those who need healing. We remember those healing from surgery, praying for Suvi, Meg Sander, Barb Fox. We pray for Edie Zabel as she prepares for heart surgery. We pray for Connie Olson who has been hospitalized this past week. We pray for Gail Reddig and Bebo Getcho, both hospitalized, being treated for cancer. 
Shower them all with strength and with healing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In your hands we place all our prayers, confident in your promises, grateful for your presence. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Just a closer walk with thee. Jesus is my queen, daily walking close to thee, let it be, dear Lord, let it be. Praying together the prayer Lord first taught us, our Father, Father who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Our closing hymn is hymn number 535, Alleluia. We sing your praises. Alleluia. We sing your praises, all our hearts are filled with gladness. Hallelujah! We sing your praises, all our hearts are filled with gladness. Christ the Lord to us said, I am wine, I am bread, I am wine, I am bread. Give to all who thirst and hunger. Hallelujah! We sing your praises, all our hearts are filled with gladness. Hallelujah! We sing your praises, all our hearts are filled with gladness. Now he sends us all out, strong in faith, free of doubt. Strong in faith, free of doubt. Tell to all the joyful gospel, hallelujah! We sing your praises, all our hearts are filled with gladness. Hallelujah! We sing your praises, all our hearts are filled with gladness. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.